oh hey, uh, I have a biology test this Friday, I'm screwed for it. It is this. Don't worry about it. All you have to know is the mitochondria is a powerhouse in the cell. True, just like in the notes. Thanks, I feel better already. We already know everything we have to know. We'll go with that. Hi, my name is Dr. Thoda, and I'm the head of the biology department at Harvard University. I've been teaching cell and molecular biology and introduction to biology for about 20 years now, and I couldn't help but notice a horrible, horrible trend among my college freshman students. As seen, this trend has strong roots in the misconceptions planted in their minds throughout high school. And these misconceptions then persist into college, sometimes even past the intro to bio course that I teach. And I see it everywhere, and now it has become my personal mission to correct this false way of thinking once and for all by going to the source of the problem. I'm talking to you, high school students. So I'm gonna say this once now, and probably again several times throughout this video, but mitochondria are not simply the powerhouse of the cell. There, I said it. Do you feel like you've been lied to your entire life? That's probably because you have been. But it's okay, because I'm gonna be completely honest during this entire video. And because I can hear 14.4 million hearts breaking, I'm gonna say it again. Mitochondria are not simply the powerhouse of the cell. Now, you might be thinking, why do I care? Why should I care? Why? So my question to you is, why would you not want to know about the thing keeping you alive? Here are your answer choices. A, because I'm stupid. B, oh, I didn't think about it like that. I'm totally intrigued and excited to learn more about mitochondria. I'll give you five seconds to answer. But hint, there's obviously a right answer. Ding, ding, ding. Wow, look at you guys. Since you guys are so smart, you should have no problem understanding the intricacies of mitochondria that move far beyond simply just that the mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell. So let's jump right in. So, believe it or not, scientists didn't always know that there were these double membrane organelles floating around in our cells called mitochondria. Somebody had to discover them first. And even though the existence of mitochondria within cells was first noted in 1857, the term mitochondria was first coined or created in 1898 by Carl Benda, one of the first microbiologists to use a microscope to study the internal structure of cells. He used a stain called crystal violet to study cells and saw these long chains of what he later called mitochondria, a word that makes a lot of sense given what he saw because mitos is the Greek word for thread and chondrion is the Greek word for granules. So Benda essentially named these structures thread granules. I'm going to start by addressing a misconception that most, if not all, of you high school students have. So this phrase that mitochondria are the quote-unquote powerhouse of the cell, it's a classic line mainly in high school biology courses. It's such a classic that it's almost like the Bible for cellular biology. However, while it's a fun way to remember a singular specific function of the mitochondria in a very simplified form, it is certainly not a be all end all statement to these structures. Where this phrase does come from though, is that the mitochondria have a really important role in energy synthesis. Essentially the mitochondria are the site of cellular respiration, which is a process through which we obtain energy in the form of ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Though this process is extremely important to our survival, mitochondria do so much more for us. For example, mitochondria play a crucial role in regulation of a process called apoptosis. Apoptosis is programmed or controlled cell death, a function that is essential for properly getting rid of cells that are no longer needed. This is an important mechanism for the body to have, as it is through this process that the body can get rid of damaged or harmful cells. It's a highly regulated and a fairly complex process, because once it is initiated, it cannot be stopped. So in order for apoptosis to occur, caspase proteases must be activated, and then these caspase protease enzymes cleave or cut several other proteins that then lead to the cell death signaling or the beginning of apoptosis. The mitochondria are involved in regulating these caspase proteases, and their activity levels are actually regulated by the mitochondria. And therefore, the mitochondria play a huge and extremely important role in the intricate process of apoptosis. In addition to this unique and essential function, mitochondria also play a role in the metabolism of lipids, which are fats, and amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins. 
Given their role in apoptosis, which is a form of cell signaling because a cell is being signaled to die, the mitochondria also have functions in cell signaling, the cell cycle, and cell division, and the development of the oocyte, which is a cell in the ovary that can form a female egg. Mitochondrial activity has been found to contribute to the development and maturation of the unfertilized oocyte, and the process of oocyte development in females is actually called oogenesis. So the mitochondria have implications in the process of oogenesis as well. So quick recap. The mitochondria are involved in the regulation of apoptosis, lipid metabolism, amino acid metabolism, cell signaling, cell division, and development of the oocyte through oogenesis. So clearly, you all can see how important these structures are in the way we live our own lives, and you can see how much of a simplification the phrase mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell is. Now you know better. So spread the word and save the millions of misguided and lost high schoolers who haven't had the chance to be enlightened. The future of science depends on it.